the video that I promised you that I would do. I got some other stuff that I gotta handle, but this is that video. Figure if I start off outside and work my way back in, maybe that'll make for more compelling content. So let's get into the first question. So if there's one thing I could take away from this world to make it a better place, mm, it's a deceptively simple question. Very deceptively simple. I have to think about that. That's that's actually a good a good question from uh, DJ Fells, uh, UK. If I'm being honest about that question, totally honest, I would say all types of sickness. You know, I think it's unfair. Sometimes people have to deal with cancer or life-threatening diseases. We're going through COVID now. It's kind of crazy. I don't, I don't think it's fair. You know, be it too good or bad, that you should have to deal with certain types of diseases or ailments that cripple the body. So I, I would say sickness would be, would be my number one thing. Take away all sicknesses and diseases that cripple people. I think that would at least help make the world a better place. A start. That's a, that's an interesting question. Let me let me see how I'm gonna answer that one. I'm trying to pick five um, five people that I would have dinner with. Um, be they dead or famous? that I would want to have a conversation with. That's, that's, that's interesting. Actually, the first person would have to be Martin Luther King, you know, civil rights and everything like that. What was his thoughts? What was the process like? That would be somebody. Uh, second person, if, if, you know, they're still at the table. Jesus, of course. But I, I, I got it. I gotta get controversial because you don't want to just have, you know, religious figures. So I gotta think about that. Because so definitely Jesus and Martin Luther King would be at that table if I had a choice of anybody. The third one might surprise you: Walt Disney. You know what was going through his mind. You know, so I'm saying Jesus Christ, Martin Luther King, Walt Disney. Um, if I wanted to understand one of the uh, one of the richest people uh, to ever walk the planet, Mosa, Mosa Musa, you know, he's, he's said to be one of the richest, you know, richest people alive ever to understand what it's like to actually be that person and understand their particular mindset. And I gotta think of who that last person would be because I'm like I'm literally just flying off the rails or off the handles. Um, this one might surprise you uh, for people that might not think about it. Uh, George Washington Carver. I mean, a genius. You know, definitely um, more patents than. <laughs> than I, I don't know if it's anybody than in, in U.S. history, but uh, definitely. This man was just a, a, a walking patent waiting to happen. So why were you, how were you able to invent so many things? Somebody's responsible for peanut butter and things like that. So those, those are my five right there. Martin Luther King, Jesus Christ, Walt Disney, Mosa Musa, George Washington Carver. Of course, there's more people I would like to have dinner with, but I'm just thinking off the fly, right off my head. So if I left any women out or anybody, you know, from that, I'm not trying to say I wouldn't sit down with famous women, but just that was on the top of my head. So I got your question coming up, but I'm literally going to have to go home and sit down and answer that question because it's like a comment slash question. Like you gave me a paragraph, man. but I'll get into it definitely.
Alright, Llama Monster. <laughs> we about to get into your comment. This is a long one. So, Llama Monster, um, you wrote me a book, bro. Let's get into what he had to say. I, I had to sit down and read this one. This is a comment slash question. But, like I said, question and answer. I got you. 2021. Let's get it. So, Lava Monster says, It would seem that BLM, Black Lives Matter, as an organization, has a habit of burning down minority businesses and neighborhoods under the guise of helping people. It would also seem that BLM is funded by charitable organizations owned by an actual unapologetic Nazi, George Soros. No proof of that, but I hear what you're saying. Now I believe that black lives do matter. In fact, that's why I would never endorse BLM. A little confusing. But I get you, maybe it's the movement versus the organization. Okay. Additionally, Antifa as a group regularly tracks down and harasses people different worldview. Some people say Antifa is an idea, but you know, maybe it's not a real thing. Yeah, you, know, you got the Proud Boys, you got the Boogaloo Boys, but I, I, I get it. So, um, they said that Antifa as a group regularly tracks down and harasses people of different worldviews with textbooks, Gestapo tactics, and an overly and overtly fascist stance even to the point of burning books and toppling statues. Incidentally, both groups are funded by the same former Nazi. Uh, with the being said, uh, it seems to me that these terroristic hate groups are promoting opposite, the opposite of their brand. It also seems to me that a large amount of folks taking part in these groups are doing so out of more of an emotional reaction to propagated and false information rather than a logical decision based upon reality and facts. Some in these groups are merely opportunists looking to loot and cause destruction. Both types of people seem to be just as welcome. So, the question, yes, the question, so, so the question I will ask you is this. If you were a globalist billionaire that hated the United States, would you not love BLM and Antifa. First off, that was a loaded question. Um, secondly, if I had to put myself in the mindset of a globalist billionaire that hated this country, the United States of America, would I love BLM and would I love Antifa? And, and we're talking about from a standpoint of pure hate, somebody that can't be bargained with, that can't be reasoned with, that can't be old, that can't be, you know, swayed, that can't be, you know, made to do anything, um, I don't think I would love anybody if we're talking about hate, you know, hatred and whatnot, I mean, of course, you can't prove all the things that you said in the comment, you know, about fascism and narcissist, you know, narcissist ways and, you know, just, you know, Gestapo tactics and stuff like that, people can definitely Google what that means to, to be, you know, fascist and, you know, Gestapo, like, you definitely can check that out, but if I was somebody who was just a pure globalist hater, you know, I, I wouldn't care about anything but my own agenda, it wouldn't be about trying to, you know, uplift one group or another group, everybody would just be, you know, pawns or tools or things to use, you know, it wouldn't be any hate, you know, I mean, it wouldn't be any love for them, you know, it, it, it would be just, you know, a means to an end, you know, that's kind of a, it's a loaded, that's, that's a really loaded question, you know, with, you know, it's like a lead in a question with a whole bunch of different agendas in it, but hopefully that answered your question, which we got to have a conversation about that one, Love Monster. I held off for that for a while, but we got to have a conversation about that question, you know, offline, privately. But, yeah, off to the next one. So, last but not least, there's Granny Monster. You saw the question that she asked. So, speaking about social ills and which one I would take away and how I would flip the script. I guess anybody that knows about me, you know, um, they know I do the whole statement by the numbers thing. So, if a social ill I would address is, you know, poverty, stark poverty, just, you know, uh, I 
yes, inequality as far as, you know, wealth distribution is concerned, I would make a way where there's, you know, an ability for people to have common wealth in society. Not saying that you can't capitalize on your your efforts to gain, you know, wealth and accumulate more, but I would have equal opportunities for all as far as the monetary system is concerned because there's a lot of people out there that are starving, there's a lot of people out there below the poverty line, there's a lot of people out there who can't afford to, you know, have a proper place to sleep, who can't afford a meal, there are people out there who can't afford to just go, you know, order something off the value menu or, or from McDonald's without having to worry about whether or not they have enough money in their pocket or, you know, can I just go splurge on a meal or can I afford to feed my children for today or pay the rent or just try to survive. So there's a lot of people globally living below the poverty level. So that's something as far as the distribution of wealth that I will work on as far as maybe more of a common wealth system where things are distributed evenly and if you have any extra efforts or any extra things that you added as incentives kind of like a, a more even basic scale because there's money on the planet the money is still on the planet the resources are still on the planet even though they're dying but what's happening is not distributed fairly it's not distributed to the point where it's equal opportunity and that is the answer to that question to the final question from granny monster and i also would like to thank everybody that submitted questions various views dgm films UK, Llama Monster, uh, Granny Monster, you know, hopefully I'm not leaving anybody out, I think I, I think I got everybody, it wasn't a whole bunch of questions, you know, um, nobody is, is, is left behind in this one, and, uh, you know, shout out to anybody that was thinking about answering a question, leave a comment and anything like that, if you want me to do another one of these videos, you would have to request it, because that's the only way these videos are going to get done, is if you have questions and things that you not want me to say with questions that you want me to answer <laughs> that's funny but anyway thank you for watching be safe god bless you got yourself a family stay healthy